rolled up. Amen. <laughs> if anything else, he goes, oh, let me prove that. And he goes before the Lord and says, well, let me prove it then, Lord. Let me, let me see what, what these people are made of. And, you know, sometimes, you know, especially when you go buy something, don't you want to know what it's made of? Yeah. You know, you go buy a car, you test drive it. You know, you, you, you know, you, you, before you get married, amen, you want to know what they're made of. You know, especially if you want to marry a man or woman of God, amen, you know, listen, you, you, you look at them, amen, when no one's looking. How they fellowship. How they act, amen. How they, they uh, coexist with uh, 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 other people in the church. Especially if you have a calling in the ministry. Your spouse is so important. Because when you don't feel like running, you don't feel like you don't feel like fighting, they're the ones that are going to carry you. Because the Bible says, amen, it's good for two to be together because when one falls into this, the other helps them out. I used to have a workout partner when I was in the service named Stanley Sackley. I said, Sack, let's go, you know, come on, man, you and me, brother. You know, we can be like trophies at the end of this deployment. He goes, what do you say? Sure, man. Okay, you pu I push you, you push me. All right, no problem. For the first month or so, you know, we're doing good, amen. The second month, man, I feel like, man, you know what, Zach, man, I don't feel like working out. And what does he say? Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe we shouldn't go. <laughs> 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 well, no, Zach, you're supposed to tell me, let's go, let's go. Well, you said you didn't feel like working out. I don't feel like working out, so why should we just go do something other than we don't want to do? I said, you're, you're, you're missing the point. He goes, well, it's only, it's, you know, it's only logical. You know, if you don't want to do it, I don't want to do it, then we don't have to do it. Then it's not going to work out. You know, you're a terrible workout partner. <laughs> <laughs> and I had this other guy, he, we, we called him uh, Chinese Lee. He's from Hawaii. And the only reason why we call him Chinese Lee is because his last name was Lee. And I would ask him, he said, hey, Lee, come on, man, let's go work out. He goes, are you crazy? Work out? Man, this all my muscles sore, man, you know, and all this and that. No, that ain't for me. He said, well, come with me for a week. Hey, man, after that week, he got hooked into it. And he started really, like, you know, getting into it. He was from Hawaii. He was a surfer. He goes, man, when I get back to the beach, the surfing's going to be good and everything. I said, oh, man, that's cool, man. You know, and he was actually the one that were like, come on, man, let's go. Let's go work out. I don't feel like it. Come on, you big whip. Let's go. Let's go. It's important, amen, for you, single brother, single sister, when you say to yourself, amen, when you look, and the Bible says, he who finds the wife finds the good thing, when you look for a spouse, listen, and I don't mean this in a negative way, it goes from both sides, looks fade, gravity catches up. <laughs> Six packs become kegs. Muscles become flabby. <laughs> Because of time and everything else. Smooth skin becomes wrinkled. Come on. Sunspots become sun dots. <laughs> hair waves. His wavy hair waves my body. <laughs> <laughs> Visions blur. Were you always that? Or is it me? <laughs> It, but what's in the heart remains. Because through it all, when you want to stand firm, when you want to stand tall, you want somebody there. Not somebody who will cry because you ran out of mayonnaise. Like me. <laughs> you want somebody there, amen, despite whether you have or you have not. Arguments come and go. Battles come and go. Disagreements come and go. Harsh times come and go. What matters at the end of the day, at the end of the night, you can look at each other and say, we're still here. God, God we're still here. <laughs> we, we're not going anywhere. Sorry, Mrs., you stuck with me. I bowed to my father through sickness and health, through richer or better or for worse. You get this. And that, my friend, is worth fighting for. Amen. And today's sermon, amen, I entitled Stand Firm and, and Man Your Posts. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, uh, chapter 6, verse 10 and 11. Finally, my brethren, finally, <clears throat> after everything that I said to you, after everything is said, this one last thing, this fulfilled one last thing that I'm going to tell you. 
Finally, this is not what I want to leave out, guys. Look, I've told you, if you read the book of Ephesians, man, Ephesians, he was telling him warfare, he was telling him all this, he was telling him all that. He says, finally, let me put this in here. My brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Father, be glorified, Lord. I thank you, Lord, this day. God, in Jesus' name, amen. Dwight D. Eisenhower once said, War is a terrible thing, but if you're going to get into it, you've got to get into it all the way. Nobody fights a battle half-heartedly, but you lose. Now, war is something that's continuous. It's the big picture. The reason why they call it World War was because the world was at, literally at war. Japan, Germany, Italy, you know, before Italy mi migrated to the other side, amen. Uh, that, you know, were the United States, uh, uh, Europe, amen, and they were all at war at one time. And it's a terrible thing, amen. You know, people die in wars. The big picture is the war. The battles is what we face every single day, guys. We face battles every single day. How many know that? Amen. You wake up, amen, you may have a great day, amen. You may act the same way you did all day, man, cheerfully and everything. But let one thing go wrong and all of a sudden your mood changes. That's a battle. What made your mood change? What made these change, amen? You know, the enemy doesn't fight fair. But you have to understand, amen, that Christians have to understand that we are in a warfare and we are in battle. Yeah. Amen. Many Christians are defeated in their, Christian, in their Christianity because they, they are not seriously engaged in the battle. You, are, you, know, you can't have victory without a battle. And a lot of people, a lot of Christians, amen, are content not facing a battle. Well, if you're not content facing a battle, then you'll never have the victory. And you think, oh, you know what? This isn't so bad. When the enemy is leaving you alone, telling him that you're mine anyway. <laughs> you can come to church all you want. The devil comes to church. He wants to see what's going on. You can come to church, amen, and have no change whatsoever. God can bless you. Oh, Lord, please give me this and give me that. And my heart is devoted to you. And God will bless you. And you will still have the stinking attitude that you had in the beginning. The Lord says, man, well, I gave you what you asked for. Why have you not changed? Because you didn't want to be in the battle. You didn't want to fight for that change. J.C. Ryle says the saddest symptom of so many called Christians is the utter absence of anything like conflict and fight in their Christianity. They go through the motions of attending religious services each week, but of the great spiritual warfare, it is watching and struggling, its agonies and anxieties, its battle and contest, of all they appear to know nothing about. If you do not know anything about that heartache, if you don't know anything, if, 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 if when you lose a when you lose a comrade in arms in battle, amen. It doesn't matter if that brother or that person owed you money, or you didn't get along with him, or didn't do anything of that. What matters is that you just lost him, and he'll never come back. The battle of the agony and the contest of everything that we face, church, the battles that we face every single day. Our battles, amen, that we need to be victorious in. Are we going to win them all? More than likely, no. Why not? Because we're human. We are human, and God understands that. And God gives us that grace. He said, well, my grace is sufficient for you. For if you ask me to forgive you, I will forgive you. That's a, an escape, uh, or, or that, that's, that, that's a net in our tightrope pack. It is not for us to jump on, amen, and take advantage of. It is for us to use, amen, when we fall, amen, and we get back up, amen. amen. All those claims, amen, you know, we, we have to understand that you know, when we first got saved, how many of us were told, you know what, God can make your life better? Amen. You know, when we first got saved, you know, did somebody tell you, you know, man, Jesus, you know, he, Jesus will do this and do that for you, you know, and do that, and we're all like, oh, man, that sounds really good. And we say, how do I get there? You know what I mean? You say the sinner's prayer, amen. You come to church, amen. You're being faithful, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, bam! You're like, what the 
What hit me? What hit me? And, you know, and everybody in the church has been there a while. They go, wait, there's another one coming. What? Bam. What? What? Hey. <laughs> What's going on, man? Hey, you're like, oh, hold on, man. He's not done. Who's not done? Bam. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> All right. All right. Who didn't tell me about the trials here? <laughs> Who didn't tell me about the battle? What happened here? You said that when I gave my love over to God, I didn't know. We never said it was a bed of roses. So it'll make your life better. <coughs> well, you know, yeah, well, it was a better, yeah, it's better, but no one ever told me that I had to go through the battle. No one ever told me I had to do the fight. I said, well, if you ever join the service, the recruiter always lies. <laughs> you can have anything you want. Oh, you want Grammy <laughs> Station Hawaii? Of course you can. Eventually. After 15 years, when you get to pick where you want to go, can I do this? Of course you can. The recruiter will tell you everything and anything, and it's until you go to the detailer, the one that assigns you your job, that he says, no, you can't do that. <laughs> but I was told, yeah, he lied. <laughs> it's not so much as the people that we witness to that we lie to. Is that, quite frankly, we don't tell them the whole picture. We tell them, amen, you know what? The truth, God can make your life better. God will help you out, Miss Jones. God will mend your family. God will bring your husband, your wife, your children back to church. God will do that. But here's the other half. Are you willing to fight for that? Are you willing to get into the battlefield with that? You see, God claims to give us abundant life, amen. But before that, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. There's the battle. But God said, man, if you're in that battle, I will give you the life. Yeah. He who loses his life for my name's sake will save it. God will oh, we're always in a battle, amen. Paul always relates everything he does, amen, either sports or to the army. Why? Because he understood that there's a battle in everything that we want to do. And we need men and women of God, amen, to finally say, you know what, I will stand my post. I will stand firm. God has placed you into a plate. Now you watch this area. This is your responsibility. When the enemy comes in this side, I want you to repel them. <clears throat> I want you to stand firm. I want you to resist. Resist the enemy and he will flee from you. But more often than not, amen, the first wave of attack comes in. The people of God are nowhere to be found because they want to take a little R&R &R because it got too hard. <laughs> it just got too rough, Pastor. <laughs> it just got a little too tough. Well, look behind you, brother. Look behind you, sister. Look who you're standing in the gap for. Come on. Look what you're doing that for. Is this not for you? Amen. It's for your family. Yeah. See, I was just telling my son, amen. Anybody can serve God with a fistful of money. How are you down here? How are you down here? Oh, we can worship the Lord up here all day long. That's what we're supposed to do. How am I down there? When I have no instrument, when I have no cares, when everything I have, amen, screams, you know, you need to quit. Am I able to lift my hands? I will not be shaken. Man. We won't be shaken. Whatever tomorrow brings, whatever, man, fire, man, I won't be shaken. I will not be shaken. Standing firm, standing the post. Who am I down there? Who am I when no one's watching me other than Christ? Yeah. What am I doing in front of that computer screen when no one's watching me? What conversation at work am I in when no one's watching me? How am I, amen, with the opposite sex at work or at school when no one's watching me? How am I at in the grocery store? How am I at, man, who am I checking out, amen, with my eyes as I walk down the street in the summertime? Where am I at on a Friday night and a Saturday night, amen? Where, where, where is my mind? Where is my heart, amen? Am I standing, am I really standing firm? Or am I totally different from what I portray in church? <coughs> because, hold on. Because fighting, amen, is simply just that. It's fighting. Yes. It's not a tennis match. <laughs> you know, you're not saying the enemy's not saying the other side of that. Just stay there, man. I'll throw this over to you. Be nice. You know, sometimes we want to make deals with the enemy. Hey, if you don't bother me, I don't bother you. The enemy says, man, don't bother me. It doesn't matter to me. I won't mess with you because I know you're not going anywhere. We used to have this individual, amen, his name was Dexter. Dexter was about 6'4". 
He had legs about that big. Wanted to play basketball. Dexter had a lousy shot. <laughs> he looked like he could play, but he was a lousy shot. And one time we were playing a game, amen, and the other coach was like, all right, man, do this and do that. And then Dexter takes a shot, and the coach, I kid you not, from the opposite bench, the coach says, don't guard him, he's nothing to worry about. Double team the shooter. Man, and I'm like, what? <laughs> that's harsh. You know, but that's what the enemy said. Hey, he, he don't matter. Go after him. He's the one that we got to worry about. She's not doing anything. Oh, she looks like uh, she looks like she's in the army. She's got the uniform. She's even got the rifle. He's got all the equipment. But he has no idea how to use it. Because he's never been into a battle. There was a, uh, in the USS Forrestal, there was a fire. It was an aircraft carrier. There was a fire that took the lives of, I believe, about three pilots. Four pilots, amen. And five, six ground crew. And what happened was the jet plane who, who, that was armed with missiles was standing in the run, was in a run, in a, in a flight deck. And something happened with the arming system of the weapon. And what it was, was that the, the missile started glowing and glowing like it was going to charge off. And it did, it charged off. And it blew up the plane in front of it, as well to the plane beside it. And all that jet fuel, which is very, 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 very flammable, it exploded. And this one individual tried to save the pilot, but if you've seen an aircraft carrier when they're in the seas, winds are blowing and everything, and he's trying to get there to the pilot, flames are going, he's trying to get to the pilot with a, with a fire extinguisher, and he blew up. What was worse than that is that as the flames were going around, the people that were supposed to be equipped and ready to go were standing around reading instructions on how to, re on how to use their equipment as the flames were blowing up. How do you put this on? How do you use this? They were taking fire hoses and reading what mixture to put in. And that's sometimes they live as Christians are. We're supposed to know how to use our weapon. We're supposed to know how to use a sword. But yet when it comes down to the battle, we're too busy like, where does it say that? What do I do? do um, uh, I think prayer is supposed to be prayer, prayer. Prayer, where's that? In Psalms? Psalms, P, prayer. No, Proverbs, P, P, prayer. Use the dictionary. When we're supposed to fast, amen. We wonder, you know, we, we, we think fasting is for dieting. Well, I didn't eat today. You didn't pray either. Yeah, but I didn't eat. You know, it's supposed to go hand in hand. It's not a diet. It's a warfare. It's a fight. It's a physical fight where we say to ourselves, you know what? We're going to get a hold of God. We need to be engaged, church. We need to be engaged. Paul said, finally, my brethren, finally. Finally, it means this is it, man. This is one thing I want to tell you. You must be strong in the Lord. And in order for you to be strong in the Lord, you must know the Lord. If you're thinking that you can come to church, amen, and think, man, you know, and, and, and be as a religious one, amen, and come every Sunday and not do a thing. And if you think that you, you're going to be stronger that way, you, you have no idea of who the Lord is. To you, you're trying to appease your conscience. Let me live like the devil Monday through Saturday because Sunday morning I'm going to be at church. You know, now Pastor Abraham just pray for me. You know, I feel so good. Man, you know why? Because my conscience was appeased. No. <laughs> That's not being strong in the Lord. For you to know, for you to be strong in the Lord, you must know the Lord. Do you know, and one day I was doing a prayer, amen, and I, was feel, I feel really convicted at times because I know that I could be more than what I am. And sometimes my laziness gets the better of me. Don't look at me like that. Yours gets the better of you too. <laughs> and I'm praying there and I go, Lord, I know this isn't the individual that you purchased with your son's life. You purchased me with your son's life. I know this. Is, I know I could do more. Help me. If I have to engage in a deeper battle, then let me engage in a deeper battle. And when I say that, fear overtook my heart because as it is, the enemy comes knocking at my door even when I'm asleep. Did somebody call for a battle? 
Hi, I'm it. <laughs> I'm going to be messing with you the whole night. You're not going to sleep very well because fear is going to rip your heart right now. <laughs> or you go to work tomorrow? That is good. I'll be meeting you over there. And yes, I will try to make you stumble. Confession time. I work in a window, Dutch door, the one that spits half. Customer comes up to me. I'm over there trying to take notes. He goes, yes, can I help you? This and this and this and this. It's summertime. I'm leaning over, I says, okay, what is your address? She leaves this far in my face, and I'm like, I can hear you. Now, let's try that again. Where, oh, wow, I said, like, all right. <laughs> What's your address? <laughs> okay, I need a callback number. Someone will be in contact with you. Supervisor named Scott. <laughs> No, don't try to whisper now. I'm not getting anywhere near there. <laughs> Did somebody call for another battle? And here I am. Guess what? Your spouse is going to be angry for no apparent reason. <laughs> you see what you made of? What is your patience? Your kids are going to go wild. Everything that you touch is going to crumble. And you're going to wonder, where in the world did my money go? Yes, that is me. Did you call for a battle? Well, here am I. What are you going to do now? Oh, shoot, I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> then sit there, and you will know nothing about the glorious victory that God has for you. You will know nothing about, amen, to be strong in the Lord means to know the Lord. The Lord does not put you to any place that you cannot handle. Amen. Yes. He won't. That's foolishness. I'm not going to tell my son, Justin, hey, go get me that semi-truck and make sure you push it uphill. Never once telling him, no, there's keys right there. Now, I forgot to tell you, you know, you can start it up and just drive it. God is not going to give you anything, amen, that you cannot do. But you have to understand that he knows more about you than you know about yourself. Yes, amen. To us, amen, if you, man, if you, <laughs> we'd rather live 10 pound weights all day and say we're strong. <laughs> I'm good. Look at that. When you max out, 10 pounds, bro. I'm good. <laughs> a friend of mine, back to weightlifting, a friend of mine named Joe, I went weight training with him, man. We were doing, we were doing incline. I said, you know what, it's too heavy, bro. Take some weight off. The sucker puts more weight on. He <laughs> says, all right, man, you got it, man. How much you take off? Well, I took off 10 on each side. He added 10 on each side. <laughs> He says, you got this. Okay, you ready? Yeah, all right, all right. You know, I pump him out. And, he goes, and I look, he said, you lied to me. Yeah, I know, but I knew you could do it. <laughs> God knows you could do it. Yes. You've got to believe that you can do it. Yeah. See, standing the gap, being firm, amen, standing, amen, firm, standing your post, because God knew that you could stand in that post, knew that you could stand right there, because, amen, if you're part of a family that is saved, you need to do your part. Not to let the enemy come in, not to let him slightly come in. And sometimes, amen, we're all guilty of that. Can you say amen? amen? We can bring something into the house and you don't even know about it. You can bring your anger, you can bring your pain, you can bring your lust, you can bring your, 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 your frustration, you can bring that, your, 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 your everything in the house. And everybody is over there, man, and the devil's feeding it, man, more flame, more flame, more flame, man, more flame. And then before long, everybody's going to bed like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, who needs is God? <laughs> <laughs> and you come to church and hey, how you guys doing? <laughs> oh, we're good. <laughs> You're my beautiful family. <laughs> <laughs> but if we know the Lord, we'll understand, man. To be strong in the Lord is to know the Lord. And when you know God, you know his character. You know his love. That even when you're down and out, he does it for a reason. Brother Yul, the man of the heavenly man, said this one time. He said, the Lord was always telling me, slow down. You're speaking too far. You're speaking too many places throughout the world. You're tying yourself out. You're getting weary. Look, you're not yourself. You're getting sick. Slow down. But Brother Yul said, I have to spread the gospel. I have to do this. I have to do that. So what did God do? God had him busted. Threw him in jail. And he knew, he knew, when he was thrown in jail, he knew God was telling him, this is the only place where you're just going to slow down. 
Isn't that a trip? You're so used to jail, man, that that's crazy. You know, some of you, man, you, God, you, man, you, God forbid, man, if you were thrown in jail for spreading the gospel, boy, you'd be over there going, hey, good. <laughs> so what are you in for, man? I'm in for, for preaching gospel. Ooh. <laughs> <coughs> Back then, amen, when we used, to, we used to dream of the cops pulling us over and taking us to jail. Well, not me, but other people. <laughs> <laughs> Me and the other hands are gone. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> Take him. <laughs> Take, <you know. coughs> I'm snitching other people out, man. Huh? I want to go to McDonald's and get me a shake. No, take him. You'll be fine. <laughs> He'll start a Bible study there. <laughs> and the battles and the things that are going on, and he had to literally throw him in jail. See, sometimes God will be, you know his character, you know how loving God is. And sometimes he gets you to a place where he says, shh, you're fighting in too many fronts. You're fighting in too many battles. I can't. You're getting what, they, what we call punch dunk. In other words, you're just throwing, you're just throwing and throwing. But Paul says, I'm not one that beats the air. I make my punches count. In order for you to make your punches count, sometimes God has to say, shh, calm yourself. Let me do this for you. Sit down for a moment. Take a spell. Listen to my voice. But sometimes we take that, 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 that mishap to think that God is not with us. We take that mishap as a punishment when God is actually saying, it's the only way I can get you to listen. Now listen to me. You want to be strong in me? Know in me. Know me. Know who I am. Get in your word. Get me. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. How do we be strong in the Lord? The first step, I'm not going to finish. The first step is to know the Lord. Do you know God? Do you know your God? Because if you did, everything that you would do would try and glorify him. You would take a second thought in to go and against his grain. Because of the lovingness that he has and being fearfully of him, you would, you, you would think, how, Joseph said, how can I do this against my God? You don't understand, do you, woman? I serve a higher plane. I am above this. It is just not about me. If it was about me, you betcha. But it's not about me. God has me to stand in this post to be his ambassador, to be the one that stands in the gap for my loved ones, to be the one, amen, that will fight off the enemy, to be the one, man, when the, when the devil comes and says, I'm going to destroy everything you have, that I will still stand firm, draw my sword and say, I dare you, come on, man. Because I will not be moved. Yes. And if you think that, man, you look to your left and you look to your right and you notice that you have other brothers and sisters standing in their gap. Yes. Yes. Standing firm in their posts. And then when the enemy comes, amen, that you don't have to worry about, well, who was supposed to be here? Who ran? Who, who took off? Oh, man, now I got two. Well, who was supposed to be here? Why did they run? Well, wait a minute. Hey, you know, but I will not be moved. Amen. You want to take off? Take off. But I will not be moved. Man, there's so much at stake. There's so much in the battle. Amen. There's so many, man. I have a family to think about. Yes. I have grandchildren to think about. Yes. I have great-grandchildren, great-great-great-grandchildren. I have a legacy to think about. You have a legacy to think about. You have people, amen, that you're praying for to think about. Amen. You have people, amen, that you're fasting for. You have people, amen, uh, that you're receiving God for. You have people, amen, hallelujah, that, that man, and if you know God, you become strong in the Lord. Amen. But the first step of doing this is to know God. If you don't know God, then I suggest you come to know him today. I suggest you, man, you may be serving God for 10, 15 years, 20 years, 25,000 years, two months, two weeks, two days. Have you ever asked a little man, who are you? Paul did. Paul did. Paul, all this time, thought he was doing a good thing. On the road to Damascus, he was going to go and get some more Christians. 
because he, be, he deemed them being blasphemous. Jesus knocked him out of his high horse. Amen. He said, who are you, Lord? It isn't the same context as the seven sons of Sceva. You know that story. Where the seven sons of Sceva, the Sceva was a priest, and they overheard Paul and other, and other Christians cast out demons, and they thought to themselves, we can do that. We can make money off this. We can do that. So they go, amen, with their big heads and little hearts. Talk about not knowing God. They go over to the man who was demon possessed and he says, man, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul speaks of, come out. And this one man who was filled with a legion of demons, that's why you better be careful if you pray for somebody who's demon possessed. And they are out there. Yeah. Make no mistake about it, they are out there. And if you're thinking, hey, amen, I can, I can do it, and you just went and got drunk, no, no, no. <laughs> Don't even try. <laughs> so they go over there and says, in the name of Jesus, and Paul speaks about, come out of them, and the demons look at him and says, hey, Paul I know, Jesus I know, who the blankety blank blank are you? <laughs> And I'm sure at that time, amen, the Bible says, amen, that that one man who was filled with a legion of demons, amen, beat every single one of them up and throw them away shamefully. Got rid of them, they were ashamed. They got out of there naked, they were ashamed. That is not the same, who are you, Lord? Or who are you? When Paul asked, there was a sincerity, amen, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? said, Paul, all the time that you thought that you were serving me, you really weren't serving me because you don't even know who I am. But I'm the one you've been persecuting, Paul. It's not that they were wrong, it's that you were. Maybe some of you today, man, you've been serving God just to be cut. You're serving God because somebody told you to. Otherwise, man, you know what, man, if you don't serve God, <laughs> But what are you serving God? Do you know who God is? To be strong in the Lord, you must know the Lord. Step one. I have others, but I'm going to end it here. To be strong in the Lord, you must know the Lord. In this morning, amen, do you know God? To stand your post, to stand firm, to stand your ground. In World War One and World War Two, in the Korean War, Korean conflict they called it, when the people went off to war, they believed in what they were fighting for, democracy, world freedom, people's rights. They believed in that. The Vietnam War came and split the nation. Where beforehand, every single person that went to war was backed up with the people back here. Vietnam came, amen, rebellious times in the 60s, amen, in the 70s, said, no, 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 well, we're not going. We're not going because we don't believe in that. We're not going because, you know, we're not going to support it. The people that went there came back, and they came back hailed as villains because they were called to do what their country called them. And I say that because sometimes, amen, if you don't believe in what you're doing, if you don't know what you're doing for, or who you're doing it for, or if you don't know Christ, you will have a rebellious spirit and will say, why am I even here? Why am I even standing here? What for? Well, I dare to ask you, brother and sister, look behind you. Look beside you. You want to know what for? For freedom. Amen. For people to be set free from the bondages of the devil. Yeah. For your family to come and know the peace and the love of God. For your family to be saved. And the ultimate, on our way to heaven, shouting victory. Yeah. For our name is written in the land. Jesus even told his disciples, man, don't, don't applaud or don't marvel because you're able to cast out demons and do miracles. Book of life, and you're on your way to heaven.
we're just sojourners here, guys. We're just passing through, but we need to fight the battles and stand our force here. Let's bow our heads in there.